Hi there and you're welcome. In today's lesson, I'll show you how you can create this tree bark material using Substance Designer. So let's jump in and I'll see you in the project. All right, so let's begin creating this tree bark material. So I'm just going to go over here and click new substance graph because we want to create a new graph. I'm going to call this tree bark and I'll leave everything at the default because it's on the metallic roughness workflow. So I'll just click OK. Now also, if you don't like this uh, startup screen, that's super OK. All you need to do is to just click on Do Not Show on Startup. And we can see we have this nice window. In case this window is looking slightly different because your 3D view and your 2D view will be here at the bottom. Let me go ahead and just show you how you can set that up. So, but first I'll reset the UI by going to window and clicking reset layout. It's going to ask me if, I sh if I'm sure I want to restore the default window layout. I'll click yes. And this should have this by default. This is how it looks like. And to simply arrange this, I want to share the 3D view with the Explorer window. So I'll just click here and hold that and release. So now I'm sharing the Explorer window with the rounded cube. I'm here for the 2D view. I'll share that with the library. So I'll just release and that's all I pretty much did. Just to have a little workspace here on the instance graph window. And right here, I'll just drag the properties so I can see more of this property right here. So that's how I set that up. And also I'd like to change the scene to a high res plane. Well, I simply like uh, using the high res plane for this setup and also for the materials. Let's go to the default and let's change that to metallic roughness, tessellation plus displacement. And this menu is going to open up here by the right. So what I'm going to do is to just increase the tessellation factor all the way to 16. And I'll just drag the scale to about 3.6. This will make sure that our height is working properly when we connect it. And basically that's what we're going to do for now. So uh, let's begin construct creating this. And again, in the Explorer, let's go ahead and save this package because it's not saved yet. So I'm going to go to file, save all. This will take me to a project where I have my uh, projects. If I click on this, you can actually see I have a folder called tree bark. All I just did was create a new folder. I just went to new folder and created a folder called tree bark. So I'll open up tree bark and I'll just click save. You can actually see our package is indeed saved in a folder called treebark.sbs. That's a substance file. So that's great. And this is our graph window in this view. I'll click the pin just to make this the instance graph in case I'm going to have another graph and it's going to stay on the view. So the first thing we'll do to start creating our graph is to start uh, looking at our model. So let me just go ahead and bring up the image real quick. So it helps to always look at the reference. So I want to create a material because these look polygonal, right? They look like deformed polygons. This looks rectangular. This looks like some nice you know, pulled out rectangles with the deformed edges. And basically that's the kind of look I want to achieve for this tree bark material. So let's go ahead and jump back to designer. So the first thing I'll do is to create a tile generator because this will help me have those columns and rows for our object. So I'll press the space bar. I'll search for a tile generator. I'll just click on this. And this is our tile generator. So it's also good to collapse these so that you can, you know, having everything open might be slightly confusing. So each of these uh, instance parameters are over here. So if we click on instance parameters, we have the uh, X and Y amount. We have the pattern size, position, rotation, and the color. So what I want to do is to open up the pattern. And right here on pattern, I'm going to set this to a pyramid because the pyramid gives us a very nice kind of like a gradient. We can actually see that from here. And this will just allow additional effects on the shape. So the next thing we're going to do is to set our blend mode to uh, max. And we can do that by going down to color. So let's go to color and then scroll down at the bottom. And we can actually see our blending mode. Let's set that to max. And let's go ahead and close the color. Now, each time you change a property, you'll see an asterisk on that instance parameter that shows you you've just made a change from the default state. 
basically so that's what that asterisk is trying to tell us right there so next let's go over to the size so I'll go over to size and I'll click on the size and for more size mode let's set that to normal size so I'll click this drop down arrow and click our size mode to normal size and with that let's go ahead and set our size X and our size Y values so for size X I'll just switch that to you know kind of like look horizontal so I'll just leave that at 0.55 we can see that on the 2d window and also on the image on the tile generator we can see that change being reflected when we change our X size under the size instance parameter and let's leave our size Y as 1 but for our scale let's go ahead and bump our scale to a large value let's try uh, let's even bump this up real high let's try 6.5 like so so we can have a very large value that will represent those three barks and also under our color let's go down to color so let's close our size let's close our pattern it means we've changed size pattern and color based on these asterisks and let's get back to our color and change the way this works so here for our luminance random uh, luminescence luminance random rather so let's change this to Let's leave it at 0.38. And basically what this does is to give us a variation of those grayscale tones. You can actually see that on the output, on the window, on the 2D view, you can see we have that nice variation. So that's gonna be our first node. Now what we want to do is to deform this shape and give it a very nice you know, change at the edges so we can have something that resembles our reference. Because you see each of these edges are slightly deformed and you can actually see these uh, changes on the edge. So let's go back to designer and try and start implementing that. So to do that, I'll use a multi-directional warp grayscale and let's go ahead and bring that uh, node. So I'll press the space bar. I'll type in multi-directional multi warp grayscale, not the color. And for the intensity input, we want to use that input to warp that node. So let's see, uh, we're going, it's going to warp in our input in various directions. And uh, let's bring in a, uh, let's press the space bar. Now you can use the space bar or you can use the library and then use the library view under textures, on the noises. You can just drag these noises and see any of these noises that you might actually want to use. We can also search for our noise right here. So I'll just click on the factual sum base and we just click and drag that into our view and we can actually see we're using the uh, factor sum base. Now I'll make some slight changes to the factor sum base. So I'll click on that. So for our uh, noise variation, let's see that. And we're going to just make a few changes to this noise. So I'll just zoom in a bit. And then for our min level, Let's set this to like five. So you can actually see what's happening on the 2D view. It's kind of like giving some, you know, variation for that noise. And then for our max level, let's set that to a high value. So if you actually lower that, this is what we get. It looks kind of like the purling noise. So we could even use a purling noise in this node, but I'll just leave this. So I just set the minimum level to five and maximum level to 12. And then for my first input, I'm going to bring in my tile generator. I'll just drag that and drag this here. And then for my second input, for the intensity input, I'll drag in the fractal sum base. I'll go over here. So let's double click on our multi-directional warp grayscale so we can see the output and see what's happening. And also, I'll like to just zoom out using the mouse wheel and select this and drag this to the left so that we can have some nice large space to walk through without having those outputs uh, kind of like uh, in the way. So for our multi-directional grayscale, I would like to bump the intensity so we can start seeing the changes. So if I drag this, now this is 20. So I'll set this to double that amount. I'll set this to say 45. And also for the uh, warp angle for this degrees, I'll just set the angle to about uh, not super much so I'll just set this to 50 and we can start this uh, start to slightly see some of those changes here so for our mode let's see if we can uh, let's set this to min 
I'll set this to chain. So again, if you feel Substance Designer is super slow, you can change your parent size into a 1K texture. This will actually improve your uh, performance. So also for the directions, I'll set this to, let's try two. Yeah, it's kind of like subtle, but yeah, I kind of like, like how that direction is. So it's kind of like blurring this a lot. So what we'll actually do next is to uh, balance out our black and white tones. So I'm going to use a histogram select for that. So another way to create a node is to click the output and drag it out. And I'll just type the histogram select like so. And this will give us some nice black and white values. And just by looking at this, and if you look at your reference, you can see we're having some of this slightly beginning to look a bit like wood, especially this one, but it has more um, textures. We can even increase that by increasing the amount of our X and Y just to have more of this. And basically, I mean, you can set this to like 20 by 20. And you can actually see we're having a lot of that, you know, over here. So but I'll just set that to 10 by 10. And if we want, we can expose those parameters later on because designer is non-destructive. So for histogram select, let me just quickly click on that. For my position, I'll just uh, drag this over here and it's kind of like killing some of that detail. So I'll just leave it at 0 0.54 like that. So for our range, let's bump this up a bit. I want it to have a mid range. I think 0 0.24 is fine. And then for our contrast, let's just bump this and make it have a nice higher contrast like so. Remember, we can also uh, set this. So next, what I want to do is to like, kind of like start detecting those edges around. So to do that, we'll use a special node that does that called edge detect. So I'll just drag this output and search for the edge detect. And it's uh, the first one. So I'll just click on that edge detect and we can actually see it's detecting the edge from the histogram select that has been fed in by our multi-directional warp grayscale. So for the width, let's uh, try to lower this down. Let's try point, let's try point three, four, like so, just to bring some of that back. Or let's try point, let's just try point, yeah, I'll set this to point 0.7 something around 0 0.7, 0 0.8, I think that's fine. And for the roundness, let's set this back to zero. We don't want any roundness because it's killing the detail. So we can bring in some of that detail by reducing the amount of the edge roundness. And we can actually see the output we're getting here. So it's detecting our edges. We're bumping that up. And when we're lowering down the roundness so we can have some awesome uh, node to work with. So let's move on. So next, I'm going to add in some detail by using a slope blur grayscale. So let's go ahead and see how we can do that. So first, I'll tap in the space bar and I'll type slope blur grayscale. And this is also going to use another input. We use a multi-directional warp that takes in an input and intensity and the slope blur grayscale also takes in a grayscale image and it also needs a slope that it's going to use to deform your image based on that slope. So first, let's take the output of our edge detect and put that as the input in our slope blur grayscale. And for our slope, let's go ahead and use a node we have already. I think we can use our factorial uh, sum base or let's go ahead and just drag that in and connect that to our slope input. And for that, let's pass in, let's just drag this here and let's use our fractal sum base and just pass in our fractal sum base like this. And we can see the output we're getting. So what I'm going to do is to just make some slight changes here. So for our samples, let's set our samples to a value of say, uh, 32 and for our intensity this is super large so what I'll do is just try and lower that down a bit like so so I'll just use 0.26 for the intensity and remember we can actually change this so this brings in this brings back a lot of the detail and actually smooths out that uh, edge right there 
And what we can also do is to change our blend mode. We can use either min or we could use max depending on what effect we try to achieve. I kind of like, like max because it kind of like brightens it. So I think I'm going to leave it at max, but feel free to, you know, make changes to this. So next I will try to, uh, I just want to blend this with another uh, node right here. So let's go ahead and do that. So next I'll press the space bar and I'll type in blend just to bring in our blend node. I'll just drag in the blend node right here and I'm going to connect our slope plot grayscale as the foreground for our background let's go ahead and use our already existing multi-directional warp so i'll just go over here for where i have my multi-directional warp i'll just drag that and see we can actually see that so i'll just go over here and just drag it and place it right here now these wires are super crossing and i don't want that it makes the makes it look kind of clunky so i'll hold alt add a reroute here and here i'll hold alt add another reroute and what we can do is just drag this and then just drag this right here as well so we can just clearly see where our node is going so we can even drag this up here and then because we have this reroute we could just drag this to make it more organized like so so no crossing wires make this highly uh, readable so also what i like to do is to add a Perlin noise for our opacity input. So I'll just drag this over here, press the space bar and look for a Perlin noise. And I could just drag the output and place the output in here. So for the scale for my Perlin noise, I'll just set this to 64 just to make it quite small. And for the disorder, I'll just set it to a value of say uh, 0.9. I think that's okay. So for our blend, Let's set our blend mode to multiply. So here, I'll just set this to multiply. And we can actually see our blend mode is uh, super strong. So what we're going to do is to reduce the opacity. I'll just drag this down a little bit until it's about like so. And we, what we want to do is to balance out our black and white sections here. So what I'll do is to drag the output and use an auto levels node. So I'll use auto levels just to give it that uh, balance. So, and this is going to be it for our uh, basic node setup. And what I like to do is to use another node to connect this to our uh, normal map. So let's click on, uh, well, let's just drag this over here. Well, that's, uh, that's a lot. <laughs> so let's, uh, what we can do is just bring everything closer like so, and I'll zoom in just so we don't have wires flying around the place. So here I'll set this to the normal. And let's double click our normal. We can see our normal intensity. Let's set that slightly high. I'll just set this to like nine to see that uh, intensity for that normal. And what I'll also do is to set this. So I'll just deselect these two and delete this because I want to set values for the height and the ambient occlusion. So here I'll just go to the plane high res so we can see what we're working with. So next for the ambient occlusion, I'll just press the space bar and search for uh, ambient occlusion and I'll use the horizon based ambient occlusion. I'll pass that output to the ambient occlusion and take our auto levels and pass this as the height input so we can actually see uh, the kind of like texture going through and it's super noisy because it's coming taking all the detail from the slope blur grayscale and again let's pass in this value to the height so let's go to our height and let's pass this value to the height so let's go ahead and save everything and let's go ahead here on our plane and we can actually see this effect on our plane right here. So we can actually see that with material. I'll hold shift and alt and just move the lights around so we can see that effect. In fact, if I use shift spacebar on this view, we could just see what we're working with right here. So 
so it's super intense the noise is super intense on our wood texture so we can also go ahead and reduce that and tweak some of those uh, settings on our object right here so let's go to our materials and go to our metallic roughness tessellation and deformation and let's make those slight changes here especially for our scale so uh, let's set our tessellation factor to a high value and for our scale for our height let's just drag this up a little bit so we can see those changes it's making for the height and right here Let's set our mood to blur. And we can just keep making and edit editing and making those changes as well. Let me see this one. So for our edge roundness, we can actually start setting this and making tweaks. And you can see it's kind of like breaking off those edges for the edge roundness. And also looking back at the node, don't be afraid to make changes to a lot of these settings. And you can actually find interesting parameters that change the, out, the outlook. For instance, if I go over here on our fractal sum base and I begin to drag the roughness down, you can see we begin to get, you know, some of these uh, tones that looks like kind of a very nice rocky surface. So you can see just by changing that effect, we're actually having variations of this effect. So if I go ahead and keep the roughness, keep bumping that up, you can actually see we're getting this more of that rough kind of like wood look. And it's actually uh, kind of like looking like rocks as well. So you can always make those changes and make those tweaks. And like I said, don't be afraid to you know go around and slightly tweak those and make those changes. Now we can also see our intensity is slightly reducing that but it's adding this uh, kind of like effect right here so if we want this to look super rocky we can still go back to our sun base and bump this up a bit just to have those slight variations so uh, yeah so feel free to make tweaks make changes and break things and have fun doing that and finally before we go I believe this material will be better to see this on a uh, We'll see this better on a uh, rounded cylinder. So yeah, I think it looks kind of like nicer on the rounded cylinder. So you can actually get to see these edges and zoom in and take a look at the material. Nice. So I believe this is a cute, nice one to use. You also have things like the uh, spare and rounded cube, but I think it just sits well since this looks like a tree bark as well. So if we compare this with our reference, we can actually see we're getting some of those um, some of those comparisons right there and it's looking like a tree bark and if we compare these tree barks we can now begin to do things like go over to our tile generator and set our X amount and also increase our Y amount just to see you know the slight variations you can have on this object you can use this to create various kinds of materials. I'll just dial this down a bit and also dial the X amount down to have multiple variations of that. So we can expose these parameters as well. So we can have slight variations of that tree. And remember, we can also expose our roughness for our fractal sum base. Now we can just dial that down to kill some of those details or to bring them back and make them highly stylized or edgy. So uh, thank you very much for watching guys and I'll see you in the next tutorial.